did you meet Buckethead when you were at the camp? I did, yeah. And that funny story is that um, uh, he, you know, he did a fantastic clinic. And, and I, I thought at the time, you know, because it, it, right at that time, we had just um, um, been, I don't want to say we had been in a magazine together, but we sort of had. He was the cover story, and I was not the cover story, but I was in the same uh, issue of, uh, it was kind of like a guitar, I think it was Guitar World, like um, shred issue or something. And so they had Buckethead and Ingbe as the big guys. And then they had, you know, myself and uh, I think Dave Martin was in there and, and Rusty Cooley and, and uh, maybe Joe Stump, somebody else. I can't remember. Um, so anyway, I thought maybe that would be a good parlay to be able to talk to him, you know, so that he's not thinking, you know, like, who's this guy or whatever. And so I went to, you know, go to the backstage area or whatever um, that I'm always back and forth in anyway, but, you know, his bodyguard or whatever was outside and he said no 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 you can't go back yet you know it's okay you know it's fine so finally after a couple of minutes I go back and I was you know wondering I'm thinking like maybe he's going to take the bucket off and we're, we're just going to be like people you know what I mean because it's like I'm a guitar player you're a guitar player let's just talk for a little bit and you know so I walk in and he's got the bucket and the raincoat and everything and, and um, I was just like I was like hey you know I just first of all I wanted to say um, you know uh, you you did a fantastic job. I mean, I love your playing, you know, it was great. The clinic was fantastic, you know, really, really, really positive um, stuff that, that you're doing. And, you know, my name is Terry. I was just in, you know, literally just in this month, the magazine that, that you were in, you know, I don't know if you read that stuff, but just wanted to sort of make the connection, you know, I'm, I really, you know, whatever. And, and he basically just was kind of doing hand signals, you know, he's like, like mm. this, you know, and then he was like, <laughs> you know, like, so I kind of stood there for a minute and, um, you know, I'm looking at the cold white mask of, <laughs> you know, in the, in the, the KFC bucket and there's this uncomfortable silence. And that was pretty much it. I said, okay, well, uh, I'm just going to hit the road, man. Thanks, you know, for, thanks for talking. See you. you so know. it really was a full-time gimmick for him. Um, yeah, I think so. I think so at the time, at least, I don't know. I heard he took the bucket off now or something, but. Oh, really? I heard um, that he has some saw, health problems right now. That's, yeah, I saw that he was doing some interviews with like, maybe without the bucket. I can't remember if that's the truth or whatever, but I'd heard that he had some health issues and, you know, was sort of reassessing, I guess, things and, you know. Well, s since you've had experiences both with Buckethead and Paul Gilbert, can you give us any insight into the conspiracy that they're the same person? Do you have any, uh, they, any ideas? They're not the same person. <clears throat> okay. We can uh, put that Buckethead is, uh, yeah, Buckethead's name is Brian Carroll, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was a spotlight guy um, back in the day at Spotlight Column. Uh, I think he was in there too. So he, I heard that he had studied under Paul or Paul had, had given him some lessons or something. Um, but he is, he is an entity unto himself. <laughs> is, was that the master class where he was having Bootsy Collins answer the yes. questions for him? <laughs> yeah, that yes. was hilarious. That's like one of those like weird dream sequences. It's like, you know, I had this crazy dream last night. It was like Buckethead doing a clinic. And Bootsy Collins was like narrating the whole thing and translating, <laughs> but it was actual reality. That was the crazy part. Well, it's funny because the meet and greet afterwards, I went and I met him and it was the exact same thing that you said. Like he didn't, he just yeah. waved, he nodded his head. There was no talking <laughs> whatsoever. Mm -mm. <laughs> that was, that, I, I was really wanting to see what was going to happen during the clinic. Um, because I was like, he's going to do a guitar clinic and try to answer questions. How's that going to like, you know, but they sort of fielded it, you know, they did it pretty well. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know. From a marketing perspective, I mean, it's genius what he's doing because I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that would just go to see something like that just out of curiosity to see how it would turn out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I heard that he that he did it in the first place uh, just because he was really kind of uncomfortable with being on stage. And, um, you know, that was a great way to sort of, you know, hide or whatever. Um, I don't know if that's truth or not, but it, I mean, it sort of strikes a chord. I mean, I think we've all felt a little anxious being on stage and everything at times, you know. So uh, I can right. totally respect that. He came up with a great, great plan. <laughs> it's got to be interesting, too, if he's coming in and out of venues, especially if they don't have like a back entrance that he can come through. Like I saw him one time at Toad's, you know, are you familiar with Toad's Place in New Haven? Yeah, yep. yeah I saw him there and there's no back entrance. You have to walk through the main area. And I figured, all right, if he walks through without his mask, I might see him because he's so tall. So I was just looking sure. for like a really tall guy and I didn't see anybody. And then at a certain point, he just came out. So I don't know if he gets to the venues like hours before so he can miss everybody but that's got to be challenging to maneuver around that yeah. I, get, I get it's got to be tough man i mean that's it's got to be tough to keep that up for for a long time you know yeah it's like those those wrestlers that never take their masks off and it's a huge mystery yeah what they look like 
absolutely man or like kiss in the in the 70s you know yeah it's yeah, like absolutely. they couldn't go out in public without you know something i remember seeing pictures of gene simmons like when he was out with you know Cher or whoever he was dating at the time and he was like wearing bandanas around his face you know and, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff now one last thing about ngw as well do you have any uh, funny zach uh, zach wild stories that you'd be willing to share I have many funny Zach Wild stories. It would probably take us all night. He he only had one uh one s- summer that he was there for a day, and that was like sort of a, a neutron bomb went off or something. Um, and that and actually the the funny part about that is that it was my very first uh year, very first summer there, and very first guest artist, you know, of any of that that sort of thing. And so that was my kind of my welcome to the NGW was Zach Wild, and uh, myself and, and and another teacher, um, Jeff Macklin, were were responsible for uh, Zach so to speak because back in the day they would you know usually it was if it were a rock guy it was me or it was me and jeff or you know something like that we would have to sort of make sure they were cool during the day get them what they needed and then take them out at night and all that kind of stuff and the short of it is that i i've never uh seen any other human being in my life consume that much alcohol um it was just absolutely astounding in, in amounts and um the guy was just larger than life. I mean, even back then, that was like, what did I say, 89 or 90 or something, you know? Even back then, I mean, that, you know, he was absolutely larger in life. And, um, you know, we went into the town of New Milford, and, and that was an experience because people, he would just, we just walk into Burger King, and I mean, you know, he's just big, and he's got this strut that he does, you know, and he's yeah. like, hey, man, what's going on? You know, like that, you know, <laughs> and everybody's like backing up and looking at him, and, yeah. and then just drinking all day. That's all, all he did was drink. He got on the stage at night and did his concert, and um, yeah, that was uh, the, the the only the, the best memory I have of that, other than you know him playing the solo to uh, all the solos to Hotel California like four or five times <laughs> in a row. Um, was uh, he just started like spouting off all this? And I mean, there's a lot of kids in the audience, you know, so um, you know everybody tried to keep it sort of PG rated, you know, when they're doing their performances and stuff, and. Uh, I mean, he just was going on. I mean, dropping the f bomb everywhere and using his 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 uh, cup as like a I don't even know what to call that. Like a like he was actually you know taking a whiz on the audience, you know, <laughs> spitting in the air. Like everything you see him do, like on the Aussie stage, he did on the NGW stage. And uh, I look back and I saw you know um, Dave, the person that that owned the camp, and and some of the office staff, and their faces were just like ghost white. And you could see the look on their faces. It was kind of like, how do we, we can't stop this train. Right. Like it's, it's already going and it's not, we can't stop it, you know? So, but it was fun. I, it was absolutely fun. Like, you know, hanging out and watching him. <laughs> so.